I should, I should divorce myself from everything that was before I got saved. How much stuff has come with you into your salvation that came from your old life? And God said to me, if you don't understand this, if you don't understand that I have broken that off, you won't even know how to live in the new. So in between my present state right now, which now I've created past today, God says you, the same mercy still applied to the past, even once it comes to pass, pass the cross. Because this is my anchor point now, isn't it? I say, this is my anchor point now, isn't it? Okay, so nothing can go by that, but now I'm still creating past. Mercy is still applied to it. But the difference now is, God says, I now only remove the bad stuff. And I build upon... Okay, okay. <laughs> You're going to get here in a minute. I now build upon the good stuff so that when you go through the thing and you have the victory, I use the victory... Because now, I can now use that for your advancement. But everything you say I repent of and God I'm sorry for, he said I'll still remove that. Which makes the enemy go crazy to say it ain't fair that they can get free just because they repented. But God removes the stuff out that ain't good and keep the stuff that is. Because now I'm moving from faith to faith. Could you go with me for a moment to Ephesians? Ephesians 2. I got so much to show you. Glory to God. Real quick. I got to preach fast in a hurry. But Ephesians 2. Everybody know these scriptures. These are not, old, these are not new scriptures. But where we going is going to help you. Amen. Come on, watch this. It says, and, and you has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and in sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, look at that, when in time what? In time past, you walked according to the course of, the, of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now presently work in the children of disobedience, among whom we all had, past tense, our conversation in time past. In the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature, what? The children of wrath, even as what? As others. Now, the, the, the problem again is, you haven't forgotten who you were back there. And in your conscience, your subconscious, your subconscious produces for you what's in you. Your subconscious is not a, a debater with you. Your subconscious is a perfect slave. So whatever is impressed upon the subconscious, the subconscious produces. So everything that you know as a habit, you don't have to rework it out and figure it out again. Because your subconscious does that. Matter of fact, we're breathing right now because our subconscious keeps us alive. Our heartbeat, our heartbeat, all that, our brain function is not because I'm thinking about it. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, the day you start thinking about how your heart is beating, that's not a good day. <laughs> when you clash your chest and try to think about your heartbeat, that's not a good day. Hello, Come on, hello. You just want that thing to work automatically. Amen. Come on. Your dreams at night has to do with your subconscious and all of that. This is your subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is different than the conscious mind. Hello. So I'm focused on something in the conscious mind that now imprints upon the subconscious mind. Which is why I cannot be imprinting things into my consciousness that's going to affect me for the rest of my life. Right. Right. Yes. But, but your whole life is consisting of what? A subconscious relation. you now flowing based on what you did in your childhood. You know how to ride a bicycle based on not because you learned yesterday. Right. Ain't nobody helping me. Yeah, yeah. Come on. My, my daughters never, they just went skating and they hadn't been skating for a while, but they went skating. Okay? And I told them, I said, I need to go, I need to go skating. They said, no, Dad, no, yeah. 
I said, come on, girl. Hey, I still got it, man. Don't be, don't be trying, man. Don't try, brother, now. Don't be trying, a brother. Brother can Brother know what to do now. Don't be trying, a brother. I'm coming around the curve. He said, I ain't playing with you. Where all that come from? That's the subconscious. I learned how to skate when I was a child. I learned how to learn how to skate again. Once you know, you know. Come on. Once you know how to sin. Once you learn how to sin, you don't have to be taught how to sin again. Now it's a part of the subconscious. Habit is subconscious. Right. But that cross came to break it. And that's why the next verse is so important in that passage. But God. Who is rich in mercy for his great love wherein he loved us. Come on. Come on, read, read. Even when we were what? Were, were, were dead. Were dead in what? Trespasses of sin has done what? Come on, somebody help me. Come on, how did he do? What did he do? He made us alive together with who? And by that you are what? Say, I love this stuff, man. This is, ooh, this is, you don't understand. This is good stuff. Because what happened is, hell is trying to deal with your deeds, your words, and your thoughts. And these things right here are keeping you bound in your present. And you don't, and you, if you don't apply the blood to those areas, you don't understand what has taken place in your, in your life. That all of these things that happened before this cross is now gone and I live a new existence. So God said to me, go to the resurrection so I can allude to it. He said, now remember the veil is what? The veil got rent while he was on the cross. The veil being rent is so serious, and many of us have not moved into this place. And what is it? You gotta understand that the priest could only go into the holy place. The, the, come on, the, only the high priest could now go behind the veil once a year for the remission of sins, so that the whole nation is clean. So while it is rent by God, because it's rent where? From top to the bottom. It's not coming. Man didn't do it. God did it. And so God, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 that while the veil remaineth, the Holy Ghost was signifying that the way into the holiest was not yet made manifest. So if God rent it, the Holy Ghost is now making manifest that the way into the holiest of all is now made manifest. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. This changes stuff. What do you mean this changes stuff? Now when I walk into the holy place, I don't have anything separating me from God. You got to hear what I'm telling you. God now has invaded my holy place so that when I enter in, I meet him. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? But many believers who are in church have not yet met this God that was behind the veil, even though the veil has been rent, because they're still playing outside of the outside of the tent. They're still in the outer court playing around. Hello, and God has prepared, He opened up a new and a living way. Oh, y'all not hear me? This is a new and a living way. And what do you what do you open up to me? And God said, God, God said to me, um, in, in the eighth day mentality, He said, Listen to me, listen to me. I close every day. I want you to get this. The, the, come on, the evening and the morning was the first day. Yeah. Day close. The evening and the morning is the second day. Day close. The evening and the morning is the third day. The day is closed. The evening and the morning is the fourth day. The day is closed. The evening and the morning is the fifth day. The day is closed. The evening and the morning is the sixth day. The day is closed. And he blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, but he never says. <laughs> Y'all with me? He never says the evening and the morning is the seventh day. Why? I said, Lord, you didn't close the day. He said, absolutely, because you would never they ever come out of it. You were going to live in a day of rest your entire 
existence. You're going to have a Sabbath rest in me your entire existence. Are y'all with me? I'm trying to get you with me if you can get here today. Something will happen in the room. I'm telling you, you were going to live in that, but Genesis chapter 3 happened. Yeah. When Genesis chapter 3 happened, the day that was the day of rest is now contaminated with sin. Right, 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 right. So God says, I got to close it. <laughs> Y'all with me? I got to close it. I said, okay, okay, God, when did you close it? He says, you know when I closed it. I said it while I was there. It is. You better get this with me. It is finished. And he gave up the ghost. And the day was over. It's as well as him saying, the evening and the morning is the seventh day. Well, every day that was closed did what? Brought a new day. And I know for years we've been using this to mean Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in the church, but it doesn't mean that. Psalms, Psalms 118 and 24 say this is the day. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. And I will be glad. Where? In that day. He's talking about the eighth day reality. He created a new day when he got up. So that you could live in that day. So that everything that happens here is grace filled. Come on, are y'all with me? So in essence, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to, this, you are on the earth. (laughs) You are on the earth. I think you are, aren't you? But the problem, but what's happening is, there's another one. He created another one within the one that was here. This is a new one. Mm-hmm. And you know what you say? Let me give you a scripture for that. You said I'm in the world. Come on, come on, Bishop. I'm gonna be in the world and not of the world. He says, why? Because he created another day. So, come here, man of God, for a second. So, if you, we are talking to one another and you have not accepted the Lord, you're still living in that seventh day, talking to somebody that's living in the eighth day, in the same space. And there's nothing about his day that I need or want. I need to bring him to the my day by bringing him out of his day into my day so that he can meet the Lord that created the day. Oh, yeah, hear me. Are you with me? It is nothing but, and in this day is nothing but blessing. Could you go to Galatians with me? Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter, anybody, anybody getting this? Anybody getting what I'm talking about? Come on, man. It is total victory in this day when you understand what I'm telling you. When you don't allow your past in any way, shape, form, or fashion to interfere with what is taking place from the cross. Come on, man. Anything that comes up into you that's before the cross, you shut it down. Because 2 Corinthians, I can uh, take you there as you go into Galatians, Galatians 4, but in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, it says, casting down. Every imagination and every high thought that, come on, comes against the knowledge of God. Bringing it into obedience to Christ. Hello. So when I see stuff that came from the past, I say, God, I have captured this inside of me and I'm bringing it captive to you. 